Hey guys, this is Craig McGlaccio with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over are the four main reasons why a gas furnace short cycles during operation. So short cycling means that the gas furnace is running through its full sequence of operation for heat, it's providing heat in the building, and then it's shutting off before the thermostat is satisfied. So then it's immediately turning back on again and trying to heat the building again, and then shutting off, and then turning back on again. So we're going to be going over the four main causes of that. In order to troubleshoot a furnace, you need to know the sequence of operation for heat, and in order to start the sequence of operation, you have to have 24 volts on the W right here on the control board. So R sends 24 volts to the thermostat, and inside the thermostat, R and W touch. Then over at the control board, you have 24 volts on W, and that starts the sequence of operation. So what happens is in this furnace, this is a 90% efficient furnace, you have the inducer motor turns on first, then the pressure switch closes, then the hot surface igniter turns cherry red, then the gas valve blows the full gas flow, then the control board senses the flame through the flame rectification process, then there is a blower on delay, so it's waiting for the heat exchanger to heat up back here, then after that the blower motor turns on. So that's the full sequence of operation for heat, and so what we're talking about is all of those things are happening, and then all of a sudden the unit shuts off. The first reason for a furnace to short cycle is the thermal limit is tripping. So this is a thermal limit. There's multiple different types. These are the ones that are, are found on this type of a furnace. You can also have these type as well, but they are a little bimetal disc on the inside here that's going to trip due to heat. It's going to pop and it's going to open up the electrical connections on the back of the thermal limit and that's going to send a signal to the furnace to stop the ignition process stop the flame process but it's going to allow the blower motor to cool down the heat exchanger so on this one right here you have l200 minus 40 so what that means is that if this which is back in the heat exchanger area back back in here if it gets up to a temperature that is 200 degrees then this is going to open up and it's not going to close back down again until it gets to 160. So these are normally closed electrical safety switches. So they may look like this, they may look like this. Uh, they could extend in further and look like this. They could be a part of a fan limit switch like this. So on this, the third, see there's one, two, three on here. And this on this dial, it could be up at 180, it could be 200, it could be on some of these types of switches, it could be 220. It just depends on the furnace, but there's several things that could be affecting that, and one is the blower speed. So the blower motor might be running at too low of a blower speed, and it's not able to keep up with the heat that's being generated by the flames. So in that case, the heat exchanger is heating up, heating up, heating up, and then finally, this limit switch trips, and, and that's what's happening. So that at least allows the furnace to run a little bit and then through its full sequence of operation, then it shuts off during the main, uh, the main run time. So that's one cause uh, and the blower motor affects the thermal limit switch. So you may have to check the, the blower speed and increase the blower speed so that your temperature rise, which you can take a, a temperature measurement in your return duct and your supply duct so you're, you're checking your temperature differential. You want to make sure that that's stable. It's not just increasing. So in a single speed gas furnace, you may have, say, 70 degrees over on the return and then 120 on the supply, which is 50 degrees. And so you want to make sure that that's not rising. So that could be an issue. You could be over firing here. You could have a uh, water column pressure on the output of this gas valve. It might not be set correctly. So maybe you're over firing the system. One problem could be that the thermal limit switch itself is the problem. So say it's weak over time and you're actually reading a temperature in the supply, which will be over here. Maybe you're reading a temperature of 100 degrees and this normally closed switch is actually opening up. And this switch says it's not supposed to open up until it gets up to 180 degrees. Well, then you know that this switch is the actual problem. So, so that could be the problem, this switch itself. Another reason that the gas furnace could be short cycling is the pressure switch. So just because the error code on the control board is, is signaling that there's a problem at the pressure switch, it does not mean that the pressure switch is the actual problem. It could be a problem affecting the pressure switch. So you could have your condensate backing up into the inducer motor housing. So remember that this is a 90% efficient furnace. So you have the extra efficiency being taken from the water that's created during the flame process. 
And so then it's draining the water out through this tube right here. And so, and you have this pressure switch tube connecting back here. And if the water level rises in this inducer motor housing, it's going to shut this pressure switch off. So this pressure switch is proving that the inducer motor is running and that there's no, there's no issues while the, the furnace is running. But you could also have something like the exhaust pipe right here could be closing off. So maybe there's a, a bird's nest in it or something like that. You could have a exhaust pipe like this. So if you don't have it pitched properly, what's happening is this furnace is extracting so much heat that you have water Basically, your, your gas is condensing in, the, in this exhaust pipe, and then it's trickling back to the furnace. And that's why this exhaust pipe has to go a quarter inch of pitch per foot upwards as it moves away from the furnace. So what happens is your actual water that's condensed will trickle back down into the furnace again. So say you have a 15 or 20 foot run, and I've seen this quite a bit, where instead of pitched upwards, you're pitched downwards, and all of a sudden your water is all building up inside the exhaust pipe and, and filling up and then there's a little pathway for the exhaust to go through and so then it runs for a little bit and then shuts off runs for a little bit shuts off because it's pushing through this little pathway so that's an issue so you want to make sure that these are supported every four foot and that you're going a quarter inch of pitch per foot upwards as you move away from the furnace now you also see that you could have a problem right here uh, where you your intake is blocked you see that the pressure switch tube is connected to your intake right here, your combustion chamber, and if you have a problem with your intake right here, you could have the pressure switch tripping because of that. So that's another issue. Uh, your inducer motor itself may not be running. You could have maybe uh, some of the fins on the, on the blower or the inducer wheel in here are broken, and so that could be a problem. So you could also have your actual pressure switch itself is the problem. So the pressure switch is reading a vacuum. So what happens is there will normally be a water column reading on it. And in this case, on this one, it's 1.74 inch water column. On this one, it's as small as 0.18 inch water column. So remember that this is a very, very small reading and you don't wanna be sucking on these tubes with your mouth you, and you can't control how much, how much pressure you're exerting on that tube. So, so that you want to be very careful with. So what I want you to know is it's 27.6 water column for one PSI. So it's really, really not a lot. So you could have any type of pressure switch. It look like this sometimes, and these will have normally open and normally closed connections. You could have multiple different types. But what I want to say is that you can check this pressure switch right here with your multimeter, and you should tee in a manometer while you're reading this. So before you turn your furnace on, what you want to do is you're going to either test this pressure switch with a resistance value across the two terminals with the electrical wires off, but in order to keep this completely running the whole time and the full sequence of operation happening, you're going to want to put one alligator clip on the common terminal over at the control board or on the ground of the furnace and the other terminal on the tap that is not normally supplied with 24 volts. So say you have 24 volts coming in here and it's not coming across here until the inducer motor is fully running, then you're, what you're gonna do is you're gonna have that alligator clip on there and this one on the ground. And then you're gonna be able to read 24 volts when this closes. As well, you're gonna have your water column manometer teed in into this tube so you can see if there's any hiccups while running. So it's maybe you're, you're reading the correct water column level and then all of a sudden there's a hiccup and the, the water column level lowers, then you can see, oh, that's when it's happening. That's when the problem's happening. So you wanna have uh, both of these tools readily available. And then as well, you can also test this pressure switch by itself. You could use a tool such as this. This is SDMN6, and this is a dual water column manometer. It also has a pump built into it. And so you could turn the power off to the furnace and test the pressure switch by itself. So independent of the actual furnace running. So you take these two wires off, you take the two tubes off, and you just be using this tool with the internal pump in order to test that pressure switch. So that takes a lot of guesswork out of that pressure switch if, if the pressure switch is the actual problem or not. So I have a video using this tool, link down in the description section below. Problem number three could be the control board itself. And so I have a video on the sequence of operation and also the control board itself. 
down in the description section below, but to troubleshoot a, a control board, you really need to know how the system works. So for instance, when you have your 24 volt signal on the W, you want to know when you're, you're sending your 120 volts to your hot surface igniter, when you're sending 120 volts to your inducer motor, when you're sending power to your blower motor. And what happens is a lot of times these relays, anytime you see one of these black covers, that's a relay. And the contacts can become pitted. And so you're not sending the correct amount of voltage or you're not sending voltage at all. You have like a high resistance across the contacts when they're closing and your output voltage all of a sudden doesn't come out. You know, you could have a, a problem where the, uh, the terminal right here was soldered onto the board at. And so that could be an issue with this control board. You could also have a wire somewhere along in here. So say it's to the inducer motor and the, the little clip right here is bad. So for instance, I have one right here. And so this, this right here, you can see it's actually falling apart right here. And this happens a lot on outdoor package units, but it can also happen on a indoor furnace where the, the terminal is just not tight enough on the spade connectors. So that could be an issue where you're sending voltage and then all of a sudden you're not sending voltage. And it just has to do with maybe the vibration of the furnace or something like that. So you want to be able to check your connections. So you turn your furnace off, you check each of your electrical connections and you can tighten them down. You can tighten each of the speed connectors down with your, your wire strippers and cutters. So you can go ahead and tighten this down and then you can push it back into the speed connector again. So, so that's something that you want to check for. It could just be a loose connection and all of a sudden you are no longer sensing that voltage. I also wanted to show you what these relays look like underneath the black cases. So I pulled the black case off of here and there's just this little tiny connection right here. So you can imagine your blower motor getting powered through a tiny little relay like this and these connections can just get pitted. So here's another relay right here. It's very small. And so these, these are the contacts right here. That's it, you know? So this could be part of the problem. So you just need to measure your output voltage. You gotta know the sequence of operation to know when the control board is supposed to be sending the voltage out on each of these terminals. Another problem that could be occurring in a furnace is the flame proving process could be interrupted. So for instance, if you had the hot surface igniter turn cherry red and then your gas flows coming across here, uh, one thing on a outdoor package unit is these little spots right here could become rusted shut and the gas isn't making it across here. So sometimes it's making it across all the way over to the flame rod and other times it's only making it over to here. So your furnace may be running sometimes and not other times. And what happens in that case is you actually need to take these burners out and clean them out and put them back in or uh, purchase new ones because each time that you're cleaning these out, you're... Um, you're kind of the chambers are opening up more because there's less metal there so you want to adjust these make sure they're all safely in there again but this right here is a direct ignition so that means that it's blowing the full gas flow across all this stuff if you just had one centralized uh, assembly such as this right here then what you're having is you have the flame rod and the hot surface igniter all in one area and this is a lot safer when you have a, a full direct ignition like this, but you could be having some type of problem uh, such as maybe the flame rod itself is it's fully covered with a carbon dust and you need to clean that off. And so you need to turn the furnace power off, take the flame sensor out from the back, which is this is the back back here, and you can take it out and clean it with unsoaped steel wool in order to get that, that black carbon dust off of it because that may be impeding the, the voltage from making it into the flame. So there's AC voltage coming from the control board over to this flame rod and then from the flame rod into the flame and then it's rectifying the voltage and you have a DC microamp signal being sent back over to the control board and that's the flame proving process for this and that's called flame rectification and we have uh, several videos on that down in the description section below. Another flame proving component is a thermal pow or a thermocouple. And these are used on furnaces that don't have line voltage. They don't have AC voltage in order to control the ignition process, though they may have 120 volts going to a blower motor. But these are typically used on furnaces that don't require power, so they're usually older furnaces or freestanding stoves or something like that. But what happens is these can go bad over time, and what you're doing is you're enveloping this 
thermopile or thermocouple with a flame and you're generating uh, DC millivolts in order to power the gas valve. So the first thing is you have to have enough millivolts to have the pilot flame continuing to be lit. So you're opening up that first chamber, you're actually holding open the first chamber within the gas valve, but maybe you're not supplying enough DC millivolts to open up the full gas flow when your thermostat's powering for heat. So that could be an issue. We have multiple videos on the thermopile and the thermocouple down in the description section below. So knowing the sequence of operation for the furnace that you're working on is extremely important. So you want to know what you're looking at. In this case, it's a 90% efficient furnace, but this one has a hot surface igniter and also a sealed combustion chamber. You may have one that does not have a sealed combustion chamber. It's just open and maybe it's a spark ignition. So it could be a pilot ignition or it could be a direct ignition such as this one that I showed you earlier. So this is a direct ignition where it goes across. You, you could have an 80% efficient furnace where you don't have to worry about the condensate. So you really need to know the furnace that you're working on in order to diagnose it. So all I can say is that uh, we have multiple videos on these down in the description section below. And when you're at a furnace, you can look at the wiring diagram in order to determine what's supposed to happen to the furnace that you're working on. So there's many reasons why a gas furnace would short cycle. And if you have different experiences, I'd love to hear from you down in the comment section below. I'd also like to have other people learn from your experiences down there as well. And from my experience, I would say that the pressure switch is probably the most common problem. So it's a pressure switch related problem. But I hope this video helped you. You can also check out some free resources over at acservicetech.com for HVACR technicians. And if you want to help support this HVACR training channel, click here. If you want to subscribe, click here. And if you want to see another HVACR training video, click right here. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.